cold continental temperature and cold sea temperature and extreme winds and tsunami. So that's what I'm, I'm scared about. Oh, by the way, this is all the data that's from um, real time maps. from Google Maps. So says I put all his threat data into Google Maps. In the next version, we have geo RSSs, so you can program your own threats and you can input your own uh, subjective values. So it's it's adding the rationality of calculation like real time data of environment, added to your own personal data that we will explain how it works on another scale. So you can set how much you fear something or even love something. So at the moment. Um, Hive is telling you locations to go if you fear cold, cold temperature, earthquakes, and low biomass. But then suddenly if you decide that you love earthquakes, so you say, okay, I really want to go near earthquakes, you can see that the swarms are shifting towards areas with more earthquakes, just like that. So that was our interpretation of um, Walking City in 2009, when we have different needs and fears. So. So that was more fragmented solutions, more than total solution. And the mobile city became more transient, fluid city. Groups became more swarms, rigid became more emergent. And the same system, Hive system, worked for local solution and more irrational needs as well. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you Hive um, on a local scale. This is on London. So say you want to decide where to go on a Friday night. So you want to go to somewhere with a lot of music. You want to have good food, but you really want to avoid your ex-boyfriends that are kind of in the East End area, so fear. So you can see that this is my ideal locations to go on a Friday night if I like music, food, and hate ex-boyfriends, which is around here. So <laughs> you can see that these fears and needs don't necessarily have to be global. It could be irrational or local. Well, it doesn't have to be in the sea either. I mean, what, our project ended yeah. up in the sea. But then, yeah, we yeah it ended up in the sea. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be in the sea if like, you have different needs. What we're trying to do basically is develop technologies that are applicable at the sea, but also in different places. So, so now we mapped out the fears and needs. Mm. Um, then it was time to think about solutions. To how do we resolve the fear? And in the beginning, Cesar, this is his personal fear map. And obviously from Cesar's personal fear map, ocean was the best place. And then mm. this, was, this was Cesar's personal solution to these fears. So basically, if you look at the map before of the threats, and if you look at all the potential threats that I decided were mine, my set, then uh, you need to provide yourself with a lot of things if you want to live in, this, in the ocean for a long time. So first you need to provide yourself with a shelter, you need to provide yourself with water, you need to provide yourself with food, of course. Uh, you want to be able to communicate, you want to be able to repair yourself if you have damage, if you want to extend your, your place, and you need to make your own energy. So this is like mapping the functions that you need and all this technology already exists. So once we discovered that it was technically possible to live at sea, then we thought that we should propose something different, but we'll, we'll explain progressively the, the shift of strategy. Yeah, so we, as we got more members coming to Open Sailing, more and more we realized that we're living in the times of mass strategies, not grand strategy. Mm. So obviously, you, I think you all know Buckminster Fuller, so he was suggesting um, food, mm. energy, and shelter. One solution for everybody, but we... For but obviously we live in a more diverse world. Diverse world. So now it's more anything. It could be Mongolian yurt, uh, self-cooling underwear, homemade laser cutter, um, any Like everybody invention. is developing their own strategies. So the strategy that we need to, to develop is the framework in which each person can develop his own. So rather than dictating uh, three main parameters like not dictating, but suggesting three main parameters like survival, well, for survival, food, energy, and shelter. We'd rather uh, provide tools for people to think for themselves what they want to do. Yeah, provide an environment to make their own strategy for their own reason. Yeah. So for them, that's um, the, the, open, the International Ocean Station um, concept uh, model that we built. 
So say this will be the central shelter. This is a rain collector, for example. These are, this is a fog collector. Uh, this is for the f keeping the fish. Seashell harvesting pots eventually. Uh, these are tilt sensors, so they inform you about the heights of the waves and weather conditions. So as you've seen in the video, we have these different labs. So we divided, finally, our activity in groups. What happened is that, being, is that all these things were happening quite holistically. It means that we had many ideas, but progressively, because we needed to produce kind of results, the kind of naturally, <laughs> maybe in the same way as the coral develops, we kind of divided functions to attain some functional objectives. Mm -hmm. And about the application of the open sailing, so we have a space of cooperation quite similar to the International Ocean Station, or we could think of it as a tool for um, uh, life saving because we actually developed the international uh, the open sailing the first version at the center for survival in a military submarine base in France where we were advised by like military staff of how to to we were trained there and with uh, survival equipment life raft and stuff like that we're thinking of decentralizing infrastructure having like uh, in like internet repetitors so we could create an hard hoc mesh networks and we're dreaming of like uh, a civilian internet, how we could create a civilian internet, so not army, not corporate, not companies, but just having repetitors, just like the, you know, maybe, you know, the uh, one laptop per child is working, mesh networking. Mesh networks. Or pollution, pollution monitoring, farming, holidays, but there's lots of application. But basically we try and develop technology and then it can be used for almost anything. And then this is the what. So there've been so many, so many design and technology developed. We're gonna try to, explain most of it today very, very quickly. but it's so in depth that I we advise you to check the website yeah. but let's go <laughs> so basically we made many many prototypes um, yeah. mechanical prototypes so uh, always increasing the scale then we have to uh, roughly to this to this uh, to this uh, architecture which is an intermediary step uh, it has a, it's self writing and submersible modular shock absorbent it has a flexible ballast system the proportion is done with kites, and it has three rulers, so it's maneuverable. I could go more in depth if you ask me for me uh, after about the engineering of the of the boat, and I could answer questions. But basically, the idea is that we're not staying at the utopia state stage. We're trying, we are actually really building it. So this is what three weeks ago the ship was uh, in construction in Tasmanian in Peckham, and now we're building other parts in Berlin, the floating gardens we test in the Baltic Sea. Uh, yeah, we have different, different teams, so we have uh, London teams, we have some construction in France, some in Berlin, and now we are building some stuff in Austria for the Architronica Festival. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the near future, we just um, won the Next Idea grant from Mars Electronica. So, September 3rd, that's next week, we're going to show um, a model. Everything is to anymore. be done still. <laughs> yeah, yes. but um, the model is going to be um, open source as well. You so can download the model as well and build your own at home. You can build your own model. And then uh, we also have a... Can, yeah, yeah can you could, Okay. And um, so in the far future, one of the many agendas, but the main agenda is to build the International Ocean Station. And now, yeah, like, we like to explain why International Ocean Station, because we're such a postmodern, fragmented, distributed project. Why International Ocean Station? And we actually find it meaningful to challenge